Hi everyone, it's Alex, and six months ago I put up a video about my favorite books, um, and now, with it being almost two years since I started Booktube, I figured it's time to talk about my favorite writers. And if you've been following me uh, for a long time on this channel, I'm sure these won't really be a surprise to you, but I actually thought to sort of group these into three separate categories. So before I even say what who my favorite writers are, I kind of wanted to talk about first this not quite section that I'm sure I'll put like in little subtitles down here for you. And these are writers that necessarily aren't my favorite, I would say, but there's certainly ones um, that I would easily recommend to people. And the first writer I wanted to talk about was definitely Elena Ferrante, um, as most people might know for the uh, My Brilliant Friend series or the Neapolitan novels. To me, these books um, are truly like such a great depiction of friendship. Um, it's like um, a different version of Gilmore Girls to me, if you're into that. If you haven't started this, um, especially starting with My Brilliant Friend, I know it can turn off some people, but the rest of the series is great. Um, and I know I read Days of Abandonment by Ferrante earlier this year. Um, I thought it was okay. Um, I still have Troubling Love by her, so um, because of that as well, she doesn't quite make it as my favorite writer. The next writer that um, didn't quite make it, but I think is actually the most work I have by on my shelves, is Ali Smith. Um, so I have the Seasonal Quartet by her. Um, I have the copy of Spring, but it's so heavy. And with Ali Smith's books, um, to me, they're just like so much fun. Um, they're constantly engaging, um, although I will say with this public library um, book, it's some short stories she's written, and I didn't think uh, they were very good. But everything else, um, it's always something very inventive and I think innovative um, with writing and with literature. And especially with the seasonal quartet, how Ali Smith is always trying to sort of push or like discuss uh, blending the political into literature as well. Steve Donahue's gonna love this next one I'm talking about for my not quite list, and that is Alice Munro. I have Dear Life, as you can see, and Dear Life um, is such a great short story collection. I think Ali Smith, or I'm sorry, Alice Munro is definitely my favorite short story writer, but um, with Another book by her is called Runaway, which I read last year. I thought that collection um, was fine. I didn't love it as much as Dear Life, um, but I have been reading some from her selected stories, um, and they're great. So um, for now, she's in the not quite, but possibly um, she can change my mind in the future. Another person I have here for this category is Jonathan Safran Foer. Um, I uh, don't really care for like his nonfiction, so that's why he's not in my favorite writers list, but Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, um, I really love. I think it's written uh, with so much love and care uh, from our narrator, Oscar Schell. And then Everything is Illuminated, I think is um, a perfect uh, debut novel. I think um, it's written so well and the story is interesting. Um, and I really love how it's written. So I like Foer a lot for his fiction, uh, just not his nonfiction. Up next, I have J.D. Salinger, and uh, with him, I think he reminds me so much of how simple writing can be. I think it really strips down to like the most genuine qualities of character and plot, um, and really talking about things like the human condition. I'm sure as most people know him for, for Catcher in the Rye, which I think um, I like this book, I think it's fine, but I think really his short stories are where he really shines. Among other things with his work with Franny and Zoe, um, and especially Race High the Roof Beam, Carpenters, and Seymour in Introduction, um, I really love this one, but um, yeah, with Catcher in the Rye, I don't like really see it as like revolutionary, um, but everything else, I think he has a great body of work. And finally, for this not quite category, I have Joan Didion. Um, Joan Didion's really responsible for who got me into reading um, in like 2015 or so. I always find her nonfiction being a little bit too removed for me. I think she's great at writing um, like within her genre and being so observant, but I just don't feel that personal attachment. Although I will say it's whenever I read Blue Nights by her, um, her memoir about losing her daughter, um, I think shortly after, maybe shortly before, also losing her husband in The Year of Magical Thinking. Um, clearly, she hasn't had uh, the best life, but I love her observations and they 
feel uh, really true to life. And now we've made it to my favorite writers and uh, really this first one I'm sure might be no surprise to people, but it's Virginia Woolf. I love Virginia Woolf so much. Um, I really wish more people would give her a chance. Um, I was definitely intimidated at first by reading her. And I started with Mrs. Dalloway, which to me I think was actually um, maybe a mistake. I feel like I should have started um, even maybe with something like A Room of One's Own. I think it really sort of uh, drives into sort of Wolf's mentality for writing and why she writes and um, how apparent that is in her fiction. Although I will say um, The Waves is one of my favorite books of all time. And I've been rereading um, of these, I've read To the Lighthouse the most. Um, it gets better every time I reread it. And there's something so, like, capturing about how Wolf writes about life. Um, and it's really touching and moving to me. And I could read her forever. I just read Wolf if you haven't already, I promise. Um, even if you don't like her, that you will, like, be elicited some sort of reaction. The next favorite writer I wanted to talk about, um, it's probably no surprise if you follow me on Twitter, because uh, I feel like I tweet about her indirectly or directly a lot, and that is Jane Austen. So I started with Pride and Prejudice this year, and I really loved it, and ever since then I just dived into this binge of reading Jane Austen's work. And I will say that Jane Austen is probably the writer I'm going to be rereading the most, uh, maybe throughout my life, mainly because ever since I reread Persuasion, um, I liked this a lot better the second time. I think knowing now, after reading things like Jane Austen, A Life by Carol Shields, um, definitely getting that context for Jane Austen um, and with her work like Persuasion being much more mature, but also at the same time, uh, I think probably her loneliest work, I think really makes me empathize with Austen so much. And just learning about her life um, ever since reading Pride and Prejudice back in the spring, um, I just love her so much. I like want to go to like all the museums in the world and stuff. Um, if you haven't read Jane Austen, please do so immediately. Another favorite writer um, is Annie Dillard. Um, I think she's like the master at nature writing. Um, although I feel like I haven't read much of people doing nature writing, um, I will at least say she might be at least my favorite essayist. There's just something about how Annie Dillard writes that's so, um, again, simple, which seems to be like a pattern that I look for in favorite writers, but something so genuine and I think reverts back to like this reconfiguration of like childlike wonder, especially whenever approaching nature and just thinking about the world. Of these three, I will say that An American Childhood is her memoir, um, but I would definitely recommend Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. I think it's fantastic. Um, one of my favorite books ever. The second to last writer on this list and my fourth uh, writer that I'm mentioning is my favorite is Marilyn Robinson. And um, I think my favorite series I've decided is the Gilead Trilogy. With this work, I think it's like development across all three books is wonderful. Um, Home is my favorite, but there's just something so endearing and so well communicated to like between Robinson and myself as a reader that I just really caught on to or was attached to both personally and like morally about the world. Although I will say um, Housekeeping, um, I think it's my favorite of her work. It stands um, against or separate from the Gilead trilogy, but I think it's just as powerful, um, especially with like description. I think it's amazing. So. Um, yeah, please read Marilyn Robinson. She's great. And my final favorite writer I have here is a memoirist, and that is the best memoirist, I would say, and that is Mary Carr. And I feel like, hopefully, if I just keep talking about Mary Carr enough on this channel, that people on BookTube will finally read her. But, um, yes, with the, uh, her series of memoirs, she also did The Art of Memoir, which is separate about her writing her memoirs. She has The Liars Club, Cherry, and Lit, and uh, with me saying it in that order, that is the order of like the linearity of her life. So with the Liars Club, it follows her in childhood and she adopts like the I like first person to where she like acts like she's a child again, but it's like not weird or anything. And then we have Cherry, which describes her teenhood. And then we have Lit, which is her uh, most present um, with her adulthood. And uh, with Cherry, I initially thought it was fine, um, but the reason Mary Carr is on this list 
is because with Lit, it really tied everything together, and I thought this was incredible. I could even say that you could read her memoirs backwards, and I think it would be just as affecting um, and just as wonderful. So uh, please give me your card chance, um, especially with Nonfiction November right around the corner. So I've talked about writers that didn't quite make it to my favorite writers list. I talked about my favorite writers, and finally, I wanted to talk about some writers that could be like a maybe in the future, um, just depending when I read more of their work. And of that maybe list, I do have John McGarren. Um, I haven't really shut up about him since reading him um, a couple months ago, but I read Amongst Women, uh, which was great about this man who raises daughters and how he feels so like conflicted against his children. Um, and then his memoir, All Will Be Well, which uh, definitely like has a lot of things that inspired Amongst Women. And then I'm reading through his collected stories, um, and he's just as talented as a short story writer. Um, so yes, if you're looking again for that pattern I mentioned of what it seems like I like in writers, um, sort of this simple prose, but very deep um, and full of so much, I would definitely read McGarren. The next writer is one that you can actually see behind me on my shelves, and that is Leo Tolstoy. Um, I read War and Peace and Anna Karenina, and I thought they were both amazing. And I think they're so amazing for like different reasons. I think Anna Karenina was great at following a cast of characters, and War and Peace does the same, although something feels like a light switch where it feels uh, like so much more internal conflict is going on, which isn't to like diss Anna Karenina. I think its execution between both works is just so masterful on Tolstoy's part. So I'm really curious to read Tolstoy's short stories and then I'll like make a definitive uh, response to maybe how I feel about him as possibly being a favorite writer. Also behind me I have E.M. Forster. So I've read Howard's End, which I think is like an incredible classic. I would definitely recommend that as like a bit a beginning classic for anyone looking to start there. And I also read Maurice, uh, which I really enjoyed. I think it was so smart um, with handling its themes and also while being interesting and just uh, also, like I mentioned earlier with some books, being really morally affecting. Um, and Ian e. Forster is such a great writer, so I would love to read more by him um, in the future. And finally, the last person I have on this list is Anne Carson. You can also see behind me, which seems to be a pattern for this category for this video, but I read Autobiography of Red by her, which is like um, a novel told in verse, um, which is a Greek retelling, and it was great. I really loved that. I think I read it so long ago, and then I reread it um, earlier this year, and I still liked it. Uh, but with this collection back here that says Float, um, that's a poetry, like it's some chapbooks, um, and they all sort of link together in some way, um, very loosely. But yeah, I think she's so inventive and so smart, and I love like watching lectures of her um, on YouTube that she gives. So um, yes, I could just, I need to read more by her, definitely, but... Um, yeah, I really like her too. So that's it. Uh, that's this video for my favorite writers um, and some sort of like in-betweeners there. But please definitely let me know what you think of these writers that I mentioned and let me know who your favorite writers are as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.